สวัสดีครับ Good afternoon Good Sunday May the 9th uh, 2021 This is the English language briefing here at the CCSA So just to recap a little bit something about yesterday there was a small technical glitch yesterday in the beginning of my uh, presentation not on television but on social media so uh, it was just a uh, technical glitch that, and all the clips on social media did not have my voice coming out in the first a few seconds of the uh, presentation yesterday. So just to recap, that there were news about uh, announcing that about that people should be foreign nationals should be contacting their uh, embassies to receive a vaccine. So just to reiterate that this is uh, false. It's not uh, true, as far as I know. If if there is any official announcement to that effect, then then that would be uh, correct. But as of the moment, right now, that's not true at all. All foreign nationals, uh, diplomats, and uh, expats in Thailand are included in the national vaccine rollout plan in in Thailand. So please just wait for that announcement in terms of the modalities and the timing, which will be in the second phase from June onwards until the end of this year. But uh, not to just you don't have to contact your uh, embassies in order to ask about receiving vaccines because that's not the case uh, yet. So just to start off first with the number of cases that we have for today, number is 2,101 cases. We have actually more new recoveries today than new cases today. So we have new recoveries, which is 2,186 compared to 2,101. So actually 85 more recoveries, more people recovering than new cases. And out of the confirmed cases, 2,101, we have 1,674 cases of local transmission, 412 cases from active case finding, and 15 from within the state quarantine system. At the moment, 29,371 active cases be still being treated in our facilities. Out of this number, 1,442 cases remain in critical condition. Out of 1,442 cases, 394 are those cases on ventilators. Unfortunately, we have 17 new fatalities, making the cumulative at 399. The fatalities recorded today are eight male, nine female, age is between 34 and 99, median age 65, one of which is actually a foreign national. In terms of provincial distribution of the fatalities, eight in Bangkok, three from Samut Prakan, and one each from Patum Thani, Samut Sakhon, Surat Thani, Songkla, Pra, and Chainat provinces. There were five fatalities in this number who were in close contact with confirmed cases, including uh, medical personnel and patients whom they shared rooms with. Four were in close contact with family members, and three in close contact with friends or co-workers. Two went into crowded areas, and one traveled from a high-risk province. Now, in terms of the medical personnel in particular, I'd like to touch on that a bit today, that in 70, 57 provinces, they, we have found that medical personnel have been con infected with uh, COVID-19 COVID due to their work in the various medical facilities. This occurred in 57 provinces. In terms of the provincial distribution, the general provincial distribution, Bangkok has the highest number of infections, and most medical personnel contracted the virus in the hospitals in Bangkok. In Bangkok, highest number at the moment for, for in terms of provinces, 980 in Bangkok found confirmed case today, Nontaburi 221, Samut Prakan 108, and the various top top provinces, you see that on screen. I mentioned just now that one fatality is a foreign national. We recorded that for today. In addition, I'd like to mention that one is also a medical personnel, actually a dentist. And to talk about some observations that Dr. Tuisin had uh, briefed in his presentation just now, Firstly, in Bangkok and peripheral area, there is a total confirmed uh, case which is quite, quite high. Now the 10 districts in Bangkok with the highest number of infections 
we have is ป้อมปราบศัตรูพ่าย with 31คลองเตย with 19ปทุมวัน with 18ดินแดง14ลาดพร้าว district 12 and the rest you see on the screen now Bangkok has had a total of many active case findings uh, missions from the 1st of April until until yesterday the 8th of May of around 107,000 active case finding and it was found around 2,800 confirmed cases or around 2.68 percent of the total number of active case finding proved positive in Bangkok's uh, active case finding missions. Also, I'd just like to mention that many of those infected in Thailand at the moment were actually caused from illegal border crossings. And authorities have been asked to beef, beef up the measures and surveillance along our borders. And you'll have a map and some graphs there uh, on screen right now in which Dr. Tawisin had presented this. Now, some of those who returned from abroad have used natural pathways, meaning through illegal border crossings in terms of mountains or rivers coming in from our neighboring countries to enter Thailand illegally. And authorities have been beefing up the surveillance in this regard to stem the spread of the virus. In four months, in the past four months, the information that we have gathered found that over 15,000 persons have entered Thailand illegally. Now that may seem like a big number, but I think according to the situation that we have right now, it's something that we really, really have to take a good look at. Because in four or five months, and we have a high number of people coming in illegal, illegally, that is something that will pose as a risk to Thailand and those living in Thailand. Now you see the map uh, there on screen. Uh, those illegal uh, persons coming into Thailand are coming in from the various uh, countries surrounding Thailand, four, four countries in particular. Now, that being said, we have been receiving good cooperation from our neighboring countries to prevent further illegal entry of illegal persons. Now that has been going on, and the enforcement will be beefed up as um, this may pose as a problem in the long term. The system, the setup for border security is strong in Thailand. However, because of the porous borders and the natural pathways, authorities would be much more vigilant in the coming uh, weeks and months ahead to prevent this from escalating. So the Dr. Tuisin also received uh, some queries regarding how to protect uh, yourself. Uh, they, we have asked risk groups to protect themselves by wearing masks at all times and to refrain from unnecessary travel as well as self-quarantine at home if found with symptoms. Now that is a recurring question that comes to us all the time. Also, Dr. Huisin mentioned in the briefings past about the religious uh, activities, measures regarding religious activities, in that the Department of Religious Affairs has announced that all religious ceremonies of any religion, including Buddhism, Hinduism, Muslim, Christianity, and Sikhism, will be postponed during this period to curb the spread of the virus. And for the dark red zone, or maximum controlled and strict areas, religious activities with no more than 20 people attending within temples will still be permitted, so not over uh, 20 people. But those which uh, would have a lot more participants would have to be postponed. And these activities uh, that gather more than 50 people uh, will have to be asking uh, permission in the various other zones. Meanwhile, the Maha Thera Samakom, or the Sangha Supreme Council of Thailand, has ordered every temple to continue to give the religious rights to the bodies of COVID uh, persons who have passed away. For this to be possible, the bodies of those infected with COVID would have to be processed and the process however can still spread the virus 
And in order to, for the hospital to prevent further spread, the bodies will have to be put in uh, various kind of procedures, uh, including like uh, waterproof zip bags, and of course about the disinfection procedure as well. So these are kind of detail which I just illustrated to you because to let you know that there are uh, strict procedures as announced by the Sangha Supreme Council of Thailand in regards to Buddhist rites. At the same time, the Royal Thai Army is offering to assist with the cremation services of those who have passed away from COVID and that is free of charge and you can contact the hotline number as you see on screen. So one important note that I'd just like to stress to everyone as a takeaway today is from the World Health Organization that it might be overwhelming once you found that someone in your family or your friends are infected with COVID. So the infographic you see on screen here might help you better prepare for such situation. Just recapping some steps for you quickly. Firstly, once you find out that a family member is infected, you must isolate them in a room or space with good ventilation. Assign someone in the household who is not at high risk to help look after the infected person, as well as, of course, seek medical attention as soon as possible. Uh, this may be relevant for those waiting to, waiting, to in, waiting to receive medical attention. And of course, shared surfaces with the infected persons should be disinfected regularly to make sure that the users use a different set of utensils from other people. And finally, you must always monitor your friends and family to see if symptoms get worse. If there are danger signs, such as difficulty in breathing, chest pain, loss of mobility or speech or confusion, contact health authorities immediately. Remember, we must always continue our lives despite the spread of COVID and to protect others, we must best protect ourselves first. So I hope that this information will be useful to those in such a uh, situation. And please know that you are not alone in this and we will overcome this pandemic together. Thank you very much for your attention and we'll see you again tomorrow. Sorry, Kap. Clap, clap, clap.